Hey, what's up? Uh, as you can see, I'm not wearing the suit right now. I've kind of wanted to experiment with maybe wearing the suit a little bit less, maybe, you know, like saving it for special occasions. And if that's like a deal breaker and you only watch the channel for the suit, I totally understand if you want to leave and never come back. Uh, today we're going to be talking about a trans TikToker named Kelly Cadigan. Recently, Kelly has had a bunch of controversy on TikTok because she said a bunch of negative things against the left and against certain people in the LGBT community. Today, I want to talk about why I'm offended by non-binary people as a transgender woman. And she's also said some kind of racist things. Not kind of racist, like really racist. <laughs> but I think we're illogical if we didn't realize that a lot of Black people enjoyed being slaves back when slavery was a thing. Basically, she's tried to do the thing where she becomes like a right-wing grifter who's one of the good ones, you know, like one of the good trans women who doesn't believe all the crazy leftist nonsense. And I'm not just speculating about her trying to become a right-wing grifter. Like, she has literally admitted that she was trying to become a right-wing grifter. I'm sorry to Dylan Mulvaney for taking your days of girlhood stick and using it for my own conservative grift. And you know what? I kind of appreciate the honesty. Like, most right-wing grifters will never admit that they are right-wing grifters. They will go till the day they die claiming that everything they believe is 100% genuine. But anyway, yeah, so Kelly was trying to do the same thing that Blair White does, where she, like, calls out all the crazy trans people on the left and tries to get people on the right to like her. But after trying to pander to the right for a couple months, she realized that no matter how much she tries to make herself seem like one of the good ones, these people will never see her as a real woman. And I've struggled with like, what's the right way to respond to this? Because I've seen a lot of people just dunking on Kelly and saying, uh, yeah, obviously people on the right aren't going to accept you as a woman. They literally just do not think trans people exist. But at the same time, like, I was raised in a right-wing household as a child where I had a lot of shitty beliefs. So for me to say that I, like, completely won't accept her apology and, like, won't accept her into the queer community would feel a little bit hypocritical. But also, there's obviously a big difference between me being manipulated as a child and her, as an adult, making the conscious choice to become a right-wing grifter and throw other trans people under the bus, especially right now when so many anti-trans laws are being passed around the country. I consider myself a pretty forgiving person. Like, my first instinct is to always want to forgive people when they apologize. But the problem is, if you're too quick to forgive people, that can sometimes lead to them taking advantage of you. So it's not really a black and white thing whether always forgiving people is a good thing to do. But also the concept of, like, accepting people's apologies over the internet is kind of strange to me. Like, I don't know her, I've never met her before in my life, and I'm sitting here, like, trying to think about whether I accept her apology or not. As you can see, I think that this is another one of those situations that's pretty nuanced. Anyway, those are kind of like my preliminary thoughts, but let's go through and watch her apology video, and I'll give more thoughts along the way. You know, growing up, I always wanted to be friends with the people who hated me just because I wanted to be seen as normal so bad. And I, I almost feel like I kind of never grew up. And even in my 23 year old self, I still feel like I'm that 15 year old that's constantly looking for validation through not just cis, biological people, whatever you want to call it, but just through Republicans in general. So if she's being genuine here, then I feel like it's pretty vulnerable to admit on the internet that you like crave people's validation. Like, I feel like a lot of us have issues with wanting people's validation, but people very rarely admit that on the internet. And I think specifically with trans people, 
it can be very easy to fall into this pattern of like seeking validation because a big part of being trans for a lot of people is trying to pass as the gender that you identify as. And it makes sense that a trans person could be seeking validation from people on the right because like obviously the people on the left are gonna accept you because they're like the trans affirming people, but I get how someone could feel like they really want to gain the acceptance of right wing people because if people on the the right accept you as a woman, then you're like seen as a woman by everyone. But the problem is the only way you're gonna gain acceptance from people on the right is by throwing other people under the bus. So you have to do this thing where you're like propping yourself up by tearing other people down. And this is the same thing that can happen with a lot of TERFs. Like, a lot of TERFs can start in a valid place where they just want to be seen as, like, valid as women, and they want to get past the oppression that comes from the patriarchy and the oppression that, like, they've experienced at the hands of men. But the problem is, in order to achieve that, they just throw another marginalized group under the bus instead of uniting with all of the different marginalized groups to take down these oppressive systems like the patriarchy. And I think I'm coming out of it because I've just kind of been thinking a, a lot about the people I talk to on Twitter and the things they say to me, like calling me a trans identifying male or a man. And I don't know why I want these people to accept me. I don't know why I care about what they think. So I appreciate that she's coming to the realization that she shouldn't be seeking attention from these people on Twitter who are calling her a man, but I think the question that I'm wrestling with is whether or not she's apologizing because she genuinely realized that she was wrong, or if she's apologizing because people treated her badly. Like, hypothetically, if the people on the right would have been a lot more accepting towards her and would have, like, welcomed her with open arms, would she even be making this apology right now? And this is the problem that comes from basing your opinions off of trying to get people to like you. Like, you need to base your opinions off of what is right and what is true and what you think will bring the least harm to people. Like, I'm a leftist because I think leftist values are correct. I'm not a leftist because I hope other people on the left like me. Like, if hypothetically every single person on the left started being mean to me tomorrow, I wouldn't just swing over to the right because people are nicer to me over there. So my advice to Kelly would be that you need to take a step back from all this internet shit. Like, you need to take a second and really examine what your values are. And I hope you'll arrive at the same conclusion as me that we should be accepting towards everyone in the LGBT community as long as those people aren't, like, harming others. But you shouldn't just, like, make this decision based on trying to get LGBT people to like you because a lot of them probably are never gonna like you because you did do the whole, like, right-wing grifter thing. You should make this decision based on what you personally believe is right. I think I'm just starting to see the reality that like the people on the right don't actually care about me <laughs> and the people that did care about me and did want to support me, they don't want to take me back. I can definitely empathize with you that this feeling of like loneliness and isolation can feel really terrible. Realizing that you've hurt a lot of people through your actions can be a really tough pill to swallow. but. I promise you that if you change your actions and you genuinely make an effort to be better in the future, there will be people who accept you, but you can't expect that every single person is going to accept you. And I'm not saying this is easy. This is like something I'm dealing with in my own life is realizing that not every single person is gonna like you. There are some people who are just never going to like you and you kind of have to just accept that and move on from that. It felt really good, like, being seen by a lot of, like, right-wing creators I used to watch, and I felt like I was one of them. I felt like I was going to be, like, Candace Owens and, and, you know, get my own show on the Daily Wire and be a pick-me and own that title, and it's just all, like, for what? Even if I did, like, get major success, it would all just be so fake and full of hate, and I just don't know how I got here.
Uh, I would definitely say that it's a red flag that you wanted to be like Candace Owens because she's built her entire career off of throwing black people under the bus. But at least you are coming to the realization that this right-wing grift is fueled by money and hatred and a desire for power, not a desire to actually find the truth and care about people. I guess I'm a bit confused why she expected that people on the right would accept her as a woman when you can clearly see how anti-trans they've been, especially recently. Maybe she saw the success of creators like Blair White and thought that she could replicate this, but I think where she went wrong is that she actually like had a backbone and stood up for herself when people were saying transphobic things to her. I don't think that Blair White does the same thing because part of being a good grifter is just ignoring all of the hate comments towards you from people on the right. I'm sure that Blair White gets comments all the time of people telling her that she's actually a man, but she just ignores those comments because if she stands up and says, oh no, I'm actually a woman, then she would alienate the people in her audience. If you want to be a successful right-wing grifter, then the last thing that you should ever do is stand up for yourself. You know, you don't have to accept me back. You can think I'm manipulative, but I'm going to tell you guys some things I learned while being on the right, just so um, everyone can learn from my mistakes. Um, the right doesn't ever believe that I can be a woman of any kind, not even just a woman that isn't a biological woman. No, they want you to be called a male, specifically a trans-identified male. There's no middle ground with the people on the right. They genuinely just want you to say you're a male that's feminine. That, and that takes female hormones. That's what they want you to say. And they just, they're so dense that they can't see the bigger picture of what a trans identity actually is. Like most of us are aware of what we are biologically but it's deeper than that, and that's what they don't get. Yeah, exactly. Like, most trans people recognize that biological sex does exist. Like, there are male and female and intersex people. Like, I identify as non-binary, but of course I understand that I'm a male. I know that I produce small gametes and I have XY chromosomes and all that. But people on the right will never accept that gender is a social construct that exists separately from sex, because if they do accept this, it will tear apart their entire worldview. I was at a point where I would watch so many stitches of my videos and I would want to react with anger, <laughs> but I, 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 I'm not going to react with anger because I've done too much damage to the community to be upset about that. People have a right to be upset with me. People have a right to not ever want to accept me back into the community. I understand that. I've done and said some horrible things. Well, see, I appreciate her saying that. I appreciate her being self-aware enough to realize that not every single person is gonna accept her. But also, being a part of the LGBT community isn't really something that people can gatekeep. Like, just because of the fact that she is trans, she is a part of the community. It's just that some people aren't gonna like her, and that's fine. Personally, I am going to take her at her word and believe her that she's being genuine about this and that she's not just trying to grift off of the left now that she realized that grifting on the right didn't work. But if you watching this feel distrustful towards her and don't take her at her word that she's being genuine, I wouldn't blame you for that after everything that she's said and done. Um, I'm sorry to the black community for what I said about slavery. I, I shouldn't have said that. Uh, yep, what you said about slavery was very bad, and I've seen some black people on TikTok say that they don't accept her apology. There is definitely an issue where a lot of black queer people feel distrustful towards white queer people because a lot of them refuse to analyze the ways that their actions can contribute to racism. And I think this can lead to some black queer people being a lot less forgiving and charitable towards white queer people because they've had experiences in the past where they try to be forgiving and understanding, but then it just comes back and bites them in the ass. So I definitely do not blame black people if they don't accept this apology. Um, and to non-binary people, I'm sorry I said your identities aren't valid, but I'm also not going to sit here and say I understand. I need, I need to talk to more non-binary people to have a better understanding of your identity and what it means, because I truly still don't understand. So I'm non-binary and she's apologizing to me for invalidating my identity. Do I accept her apology? I don't know, I guess so. I'm just some random person on the internet. It doesn't really matter whether or not I accept her apology. 
The whole culture around, like, apologizing on the internet can feel pretty performative. And while I think apologies are a good and sometimes necessary thing to do, what really matters is what actions you take after apologizing. I would say, moving forward, just be chill and accepting towards non-binary people, and most of us will be chill towards you back. I'm gonna choose to believe that you're being genuine and you're not just trying to grift off of the left, and hopefully moving forward, you can actually be a super positive trans advocate instead of being a negative one. And yeah, if you wanna have a conversation with me, my DMs are open. We can talk about what it means to be non-binary. Sounds like a good time. The last thing I saw is that Kelly went to Target and bought a pride flag to try to show that she's more accepting towards the trans community now. So I actually just came to Target because I was going to pick up a new pride flag, uh, an actual pride flag, the one that has like all the new additions on it. Um, because I wanted to prove to you guys that um, I do support this community and I do want to change. And let me just say that giving money to massive capitalist corporations that don't give a fuck about queer people isn't really doing anything to help us. But uh, I appreciate the gesture. I hope you go and buy every single piece of Pride merch from every single Target. Anyway, that's about all my thoughts for now. I hope that we can all continue on the process of being slightly better people every single day and making the world a better place for queer people. But part of making the world a better place is respecting people's boundaries and realizing that some people are just never going to like you because of your negative actions. And that's okay. And it sounds like Kelly realizes this. So Kelly, I wish you the best and I'll see you guys in the next one.